Tonight, on the wonderful world of Disney, Kit Carson and the Mountain Men. There she is, boys. The last good beaver country. Here's where we split up, divided three ways. Rennie, Tioga, you want the north? All right. How about you, Basil? You call it. South suits me, kid. Fair enough. I'll take everything in between. Basil, are you going to the same place you did last year? Good. We'll meet there a week before rendezvous. Ride down together. Celeste, you miss me being gone all day, huh?
Carson says to take it. Carson can take it himself. Where is he? He looks for a sign to prove who did this thing. I told him it was Brad Haskell. Who else has a buckskin? Any tracks he left would have been washed away by the storm. He keeps looking. I think he's going to find something. Nope. I found him. Horse tracks. There's a notch in the right hind foot. It was Brad Haskell's buckskin, all right. So? I've been telling you that ever since you've been here. I can't call a man out just because you said you saw the rear end of his horse. Where are you going, mon ami? To get Haskell. Only I can kill him. I am the one he left behind for dead. My beef hurt is stole. We're partners, and you're a sick man. Yes, but not too sick to stop you from killing him. I didn't know you were interested in saving his life. Just so I can kill him myself. Pack up, boys. It appears we're going to the big rendezvous after all. Spill a little paint. <laughs> I want you to look over there, see? That's Captain John C. Fremont. He come all the way here from Washington, D.C. <laughs> anyway, boys, the captain come out here to hire men for a survey party going west. And I signed on as a chief scout! Come on, hey, boys! That's what this here shooting match is all about. We're gonna see which of you guys get hired. There's a brand new Hawkins rifle for every guy who gets it! Run on up over there! through them rules, huh? Now, what we got is all them bottles down yonder. But what I want is a tin best shot in all these mountains. Here. Right here. 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 Gabe, Gabe, what you doing? You you couldn't hit the ground with your head. Now, you step out of there. <laughs> Get out of there. Now, you too, Greg. Now, boys, what we got is a pair of bottles for each man. First man, first pair, second man, second pair, and on down like that. Now, y'all hold your fire until I give you a signal, and after that, you're all on your own, huh? Yeah. Okay. Hey. Hold on, hold on. First ten men to reload and hit the second bottle, them's the winners. You get the idea, boy? Yeah. yeah we got it. All right, now get ready. <laughs> all right. Now, hold on. Take aim.
Now let's see who the winners are. Uh, Jason, I know you was ninth. And that's right, Mo, you was ten. Mr. Haskell. That's the finest shooting I've ever seen. You have those men report to me in Pueblo on Monday. Yes, sir, Captain. Yeah! That's it, I know you was number one. That's only because I wasn't doing any shooting myself, you know. <laughs> you didn't hear that? Oh, Judd here, he beat you blindfolded, Brett. And I got five plues that say he can't. You know. Well, what do you say we settle a match for ten plues, Judd? I reckon. Well, you're on. Silver dollar targets. My money's on bread. Hey, we ain't got any money. I'll bet three plus I'll cover that. Anybody want to bet? Get your money now. Red Haskell. I'm going to get him now. Now's not the time or the place. Take care of business first. Here you go, Brett. All right. Hold on. Here, you take this. Give me that. <laughs> Guess it wouldn't do no harm letting our old friend Brett know we're here, though. Yeah. I'll take the right. Hey, boy, uh, let go. My name is Edward Kern, and our officer would like to have you both come up and speak with him for a minute. He is crippled, your officer. Why don't he come to us? What's he want to talk about? Well, he's hiring men for a survey party. They're paying $15 a month. $15? Tell him we appreciate the offer, but we got other plans. May I have your name, please? Carson. This is Basil Lozaness. You're not Kit Carson, are you? Yeah. It's really a pleasure. I'll tell the captain. Goodbye. Thank you very much, Mr. Carson. Get fifteen dollars cash on a barrel head. Don't that make you change your mind a little? Don't change nothing. I'm gonna buy a farm this year, just like I said it would. Well, you can buy the farm, but you won't stay on it any more than you did the one you were born on. <laughs> come on, come on. See those four men on the way to sell their furs? Uh -huh. The one in the light buckskin. That's Kit Carson. What did Mr. Carson have to say? Uh, he said to tell you he had other plans, sir. Kit Carson. Somehow I always pictured him as a much larger man. Actually, he's just about... Christopher Carson's a giant, Mr. Kern. One doesn't measure a man by his size, but by his deeds. That's right, Brother John. Kit Carson's the greatest mountain man that ever lived. This book here's all about him. About his fights with the bears and the Indians and dastardly cowards. Just about everything he's ever done. I'm quite familiar with Miss Carson's reputation, Randall. Aren't you even going to talk to him? We'll let him sell the furs first. <laughs> then I think our proposition's going to start looking better. So they stopped wearing beaver hats in London and Paris. What is that to me? What it means, friend, is I can't make you my usual generous offer for your goods. What the hell are your fur traders? Hey, 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 just save your breath. We'll be doing get us even less. Farm mine's getting smaller than a bear's tail. Kids, why do we let this thief cheat us every year? I guess man's the only critter can get skinned more than once. Take your offer. It's better than nothing. Here. I don't want you back. My fur was stolen. We're partners. Share and share alike. I collect my share now. Let's help. 
this is personal. Mind if we watch? Carson, mon enfant, you always win. Hello. Who are you, anyway? Yes, we, Randy Benton. Ah, tu parles français. Oui, monsieur. <laughs> Is it really true? I mean, does Kit Carson always win, like it says in the book? Book? What book? I buy this book, huh, so I can read it to my friend Kit, huh? Back home, we don't sell them, we trade them. Oh, trade, I will trade, yes, I will give you uh, an arrowhead here from uh, the Cheyenne. Or uh, one pump shell. Huh? Very, very rare. And a tooth, the front tooth of a Sioux chief. I don't want to sell it or trade it. I just showed it to you. doesn't know it, but he just met the greatest trader in the world, including St. Louis and Santa Fe. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Carson? Yeah. I'm John Fremont. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Let's set him up. I've heard a lot about you, Captain. <laughs> well, if I'd known it was you when that fellow brought your message, I would have been proud to walk over and say howdy. Well, my office still holds. I appreciate that. Fifteen dollars a month is fair. For you, fifty dollars a month. As my chief scout. I thought you already had a chief scout. You mean Mr. Haskell? Well, for a number of reasons, I've decided to give him a dishonorable discharge. The offer uh, it includes my men, of course. Of course. Agreed? Yes, sir. Good. We leave for Pueblo tomorrow morning, then head west. Oh, Mr. Carson, uh, one other thing. My brother-in-law is new to the West, a great admirer of yours. I'd consider it a personal favor if you'd uh, take him under your wing. Be happy to, uh, Mr. Kern? No, no, Mr. Carson. My brother-in-law, Randolph. Most people call me Randy. <laughs> You're his brother-in-law? Yep. <laughs> What's that? That is your severance pay, Mr. Hasco, with the captain's compliments. Severance pay ain't quit yet. No, but the captain has replaced you, sir, with Kit Carson. Well, 
You tell that stuck-up little captain of yours with my compliments, I'll have the hair of him and Carson both if he tries to get rid of me. Perhaps you didn't hear me, sir. It's already been done. You're a little man, I'll tell you. Momento, senor. Just a few minutes of your time, senor Haskell. What do you want? That is small change compared to what you and I will talk about. told me he tried to scalp a man wearing a wig. He grabbed hair, swing knife, cut own elbow. Very funny story. Stop here. Kern, equipment, if you please. Yes, sir. Cap Fremont, it's narrow downstream, a little rocky, but we can make it. What's that? That, Mr. Carson, is the U.S. engineer's new rubber boat. We've been assigned to test it, complete with cargo and file report. Tested. What, here? Why not? Why not? Because it's darn like foolish to stop here and play with boats when there's a ford just a couple hours downstream. Mr. Carson, as chief scout, I assume you want to be responsible for the performance of the equipment. <laughs> yes, sir, but... Mr. Lajeunesse will assist you. Rennie, Tioga. Captain. Tell the they stay with me. No, Kit. Better we go with Captain. Too many animals. Need help crossing Ford. They call themselves Marines. There. That'll do her. Well, after you, Captain. Little while I'm always talking about she knows so much about boats. <laughs> Oh, but with canoe, I am one of the great voyageurs. But with balloons like that, well, don't spare your paddle and steer a straight course. You hear? Yes, sir. The Lord willing, it'll be a safe voyage and a happy land. You ready? Yes, sir. 
All right. Here we go. You two men weren't frolicking in the boat. Frolicking? He got one? 
No, just a pistol. Well, there ain't one up here and it didn't walk away. I'm gonna have a look around. Any of you know this man? I do, Captain. His name's Martinez. Calls himself Spanish and he works for the governor of New Mexico, a general armijo. When I got in last night, he and Bert Haskell was drinking together. Some of you men help Mr. Carson look around. And report to me when you're finished at the hotel. Captain. If I leave now, I can get him before he gets to Santa Fe and General Amigo. Permission denied. I didn't reckon I was asking for permission. I'm responsible for the expedition. And I'm responsible for its safety. Listen, Captain, I don't know what you people do where you come from if someone takes a shot at you. But out here, we make sure they don't get a second chance. I've been called many things, Mr. Carson, but never a coward. I don't reckon I'm obeying any orders making me out one either. I'm going to take you into my confidence, Mr. Carson. There's a deal more to my survey party than just exploration. We're going to California. Now, unfortunately, Brett Haskell knows this and is sure to tell General Armijo, and that means that we have to outfit our party here in Pueblo today. And we start for California tomorrow morning. You're, you're talking about that war coming on with Mexico. I kind of wondered why you hired the best rifle shots in the mountains. Not for hostilities in Mexican territory. My mountain men are simply to ensure that we complete our survey without interruption. Seems like General Amigo is trying to ensure otherwise. My government is willing to pay well for the defense of New Mexico. In my opinion, Fremont is the greatest threat to our sovereignty. He claims to lead a survey party. Yet he recruits a company of mountain men. It is my belief he goes to California to stir up an insurrection. Well, how many men are you going to give me, General? None. No Mexican nationals can be involved. Only my aide, Tibor. He will go with you as my personal representative. <laughs> You're talking about sending just the two of us? Not at all. We made the mistake of trying to stop Fremont with one or two men in Pueblo. This time, I want an adequate force. Santa Fe is full of fugitives from the United States. All of them, uh, desperate men. I'm sure that you could recruit a very effective army, Senor Hasco. Well, they can't look like an army of Americans, because if they do, the cavalry will hunt us down right to the last man. You have my offer. Have now and have when you complete your assignment. How you do it, it is up to you. Fremont's as good as yours, Governor. And I'll get myself Carson and that Frenchman as a bonus. We rather thought you would like to dispose of other members of the party. But remember, Senor Haskell, we only pay for the elimination of Captain Fremont. Oh, I'm sorry you spent all your allowance for clothes for the trail, Randy, but you can't go with us. Why, your sister would skin me alive. She wouldn't have to know. If you didn't arrive in St. Louis in time for school next term, of course she'd know. Now, well, Randy, you and I had a gentleman's agreement right from the start. You were to go as far as Pueblo, and that was all. But I didn't know Kit Carson was going to be with you then. We leave at sunup. You'll stay here with Mr. Lajeunesse until the freighters come for you, then he'll rejoin us. Meanwhile, Mr. Curran can give you some requisition forms, and you can help us get ready. I don't want to help you get ready, Brother John. I want to go with you. I'm sorry, Randolph. There's nothing more to talk about. Oh, I wish I could go with you. I'll 
bet you do. You don't know what difficult it is to be left alone in this miserable town, wasting time with drink and games of chance. care of the boy, Miss Lajeunesse. Oui, monsieur, the very best. So long, Randy. We're gonna miss you this trip. There are a lot of new trails out west that ain't been touched yet. They're just waiting for you and me to blaze them together later on. to do at night in a town like this for a, for a boy like you. You can play cards. <laughs> sure, sure, but uh, what about you? I'm kind of tired. I think I just might go to my room. Oh, you are very much. It has been a hard day. Bonsoir, Randy. Bonsoir. Oh, Randy, I, uh, I was thinking about that book about my friend Kit. Pretty soon you will be going back to St. Louis where there are many books like that. I thought perhaps you might change your mind. I don't think so. Not even for a green river knife? Here, take it. You can uh, wear it in your belt. Here. I was going to sell it tonight, but uh, I might be willing to trade it for that very old book. Voila. <laughs> now we are both very happy. Okay, I will see you at breakfast, but not too early. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. I'm sorry, son. That Fremont bunch took everything with four legs. But this requisition is signed by Captain Fremont. Well, it don't make no difference. President Polk signed it. I ain't even got a jenny left. Nothing. This Sunday morning. The boy is gone. He didn't sleep in his bed last night. You talking about that kid with the Fremont bunch? Have you seen him? I seen him last night, but I ain't seen him this morning. He tried to buy a horse from me. 
Well, I told him I didn't have nothing for sale. Where did he go? I don't know. But late on last night, I seen him ride out of town. I guess he stole himself an ugly mule. Uh Look, I need a horse. And this, this here is a government requisite. Let me tell you something, and I'm telling you the same thing I told that kid. I ain't got no horse for sale. That three more birds clean me out. You know what you ought to do, Frenchy? You ought to do like that kid did. Go out and steal yourself an ugly mule. Ah, that won't be necessary, Moreni. I just found myself a horse. <laughs> That's my horse, and he ain't for sale. Yeah, this you don't seem to understand. This here is a government requisition, and I'd like to explain to you what this is all about.
Tell me the great tracker Lajeunesse can't even find a 12-year-old boy? Well, I was following Manuel Celes. How was I to know he was not on her? We better find him before the captain finds out. Tioga, get the horses. Rennie, you stay by the campfire in case the captain starts looking for us. What do you mean, lost? I'll give you one simple assignment. You manage to turn this expedition into a shambles. I'll deal with you later. Dismissed. As for you, Randolph, this deceit is very unworthy of you. The Bentons and the Fremonts are expected to set an example. I'm very disappointed. But, Brother John... No buts, Randolph. You're going back to Pueblo first thing in the morning. You get out of here. Mr. Carson! Mr. Carson! Carson, you make arrangements to have that boy taken back tomorrow. Well, I don't reckon that's possible, Captain. I can't spare the men. If you said anything about the men, one should be enough. The boy's gonna have to stay here, Captain. There's no two ways about it. They're hostiles between here and Pueblo. We just ran into a burnout Shoshone village. Nobody was left alive. Where? A holler from here. Blackfeet? Not likely. The bodies were all stripped naked. stays with us. By Harry, we're going to have discipline around here. And I'm going to see that Lodge Ness and Randolph remember that. his compliments and asked me to tell you that he ain't advertising a circus. In other words, he'd like a lot less racket back here. Kid, why is the captain deviling me so? Everybody knows this child cannot cook. This child either. Not much longer, Mon enfant. Not much longer, I promise you. Get the rest of the pans and that'll be all for tonight. A little touch of tobacco for flavor. Mm -hmm. Bon appétit. 
been punished enough, but I certainly have. And there are decent meals that you stop cooking. I want you to resume your duty. Be happy to, sir. I'll start tomorrow. What have you there? In your hand. Well, this is my dinner, sir. I've been preparing my own. Oh, good. Uh, Ed, pull up a chair. Well, thank you very much, John. Excuse me. Sir. Hey, food the coyotes passed up. I got no stomach for that. Well, that is strange. Coming from a man who has stomach enough to massacre the whole Comanche nation? Uh-uh. You cannot deny it. It was all in here, in words. Oh, you cut them down? One by one. Riding backwards. Where'd you get that? We got the Sierras there and then California. How long do you think it'll take? Oh, it's hard to tell. Maybe two, three weeks. Nothing raises the same between here and there. We'll have to go a good deal faster than that, Mr. Carson. We're going to beat the winter snow. Mr. Carson, not north. Why can't we take that route? It's too dangerous, Captain. Only one man's actually made it all the way through that route. Jedediah Smith. One man can make it. We can all make it. Watch you and Mr. Larson and Esther scout the entrance. You ride in a mile or two and we leave tomorrow morning.
want to do something like that to old Basil now, would you? Kid. Kid Carson. We'll all be. Breaker! You big ox! I was about ready to shoot you when you looked the biggest, Padre. <laughs> you always was a wild one, kid. Had to tie your feet to give you a haircut. <laughs> ah, Basil, you old horse. Sorry I had to drop in on you that way, but I thought you were one of them horse types. Yeah. Injuns been following me along the ridge all day. What tribe? I don't rightly know. I thought at first maybe Shoshone. They don't act like any snake engine I ever seen. What you doing around here anyway? Oh, I was following Jed Smith's trail through the pass, and I mislaid a water hole, and my horse died under me. You know, kid, it's a funny thing. Me being a foot and all, those horse styles didn't attack. Now, that ain't like them. <laughs> hey, with you two here, why, we can chase them engines all the way back to Kennedy. Just hold your horses, Jim. Them engines will keep. If you just came through Smith's Pass, Captain Fremont's going to want to talk to you. Uh, all right, Christopher, if you say so. <laughs> Fact is, I'm a mite tuckered anyhow. You know, the bone got so heavy the last few days, I... I made my fleas get off and walk. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure you ain't got no fleas. I'll let you take my horse. All right? ain't the only horse that's been going through here lately. Like I told you, kid. Them's hostiles. You fellas go on. I'm gonna look around. Lookout point. Indians who don't act like Indians. It all fits, Captain. That's true. General Armijo involved. He doesn't want suspicion cast on Mexico. Haskell will be waiting for us in the canyon. Make it look like an Indian attack. Unless we go through the North Pass, behind his back. No, that's where you're wrong, Mr. Carson. For Jim Bridger to guide us, there's all the more reason to use Jed Smith's route. Uh -huh. With Brett Haskell waiting in the ambush every step of the way? Mr. Carson, let me ask you a question. What, in your opinion, is the real purpose behind this expedition? I'd say you're being sent to California to find out how well it's defended. And see how much popular support our army gets if it moves in. Mm, that's close enough. So now you know why it's imperative that I cross the Sierras into California before snow blocks the trails. I've got to gamble on Smith Pass. What about the boy? Randy will be your responsibility. I'm sending him the Safeway through the North Pass with you and Lajeunesse. Now, wait a minute. There's a second reason for sending you the Safeway. If anything happens to us, I'm sure it won't. I want you to give this personally to Thomas Larkin, the American consul in Monterey. It contains his latest instructions from the president. We'll wait for you, Mr. Carson, as long as we can, the California border, till the first sign of snow. You best be on your way. You and Lajeunesse take your Delawares and two men with you and leave as soon as possible. I'll give you 12 hours head start. They ain't there. And them Delawares, and there's a couple others missing. Let me have a look. Must have snuck up during the night. Well, that's it, amigo. They took the boy and they headed for the North Pass, thinking it's safe. Well, as I figured, we just shortcut through the hills, nail our hide to the rocks. 
It is Fremont who is not to reach California. Those are General Armijo's orders. Well, General Armijo ain't here taking the risk. I am. And I give the orders. I speak for the general. Fremont first. I do not want to have to take the command from you. I don't think none of us want that. Here they go. Give me that pot of coffee, son. Hold this. fire until we reach the other side. From now on, nobody goes off by himself. Always take someone with you. No noise. The bigger the mouth, the better it looks shut. We ain't got cover like here. We ride by night. your time. Carson may have gone through already, or gone another way. All the while, Fremont is getting further away. They'll be along. We cannot wait to find out. If they do not come today, we leave. You and who else, Tibor? Me, Senor Haskell. And anyone else who wants to get paid. <laughs>
Well, ain't you the prize? John. Now, one word, you get the knife, understand? Huh? Huh? All right. Now, you just start walking. I'll be right behind you, understand? in size, but he sure is worth his weight in gold, amigo. Now, boy, now you got nothing to worry about as long as you tell us what we want to know. think you're doing? There are only six of them. We can take them easily. Not by letting them pick us off as we ride down a hillside. We got the kid and they got to come to us. And then we'll do the picking off. What good is the boy if Fremont is already in California? I say we go now. Hey. <coughs> Next time you give my man orders, amigo, it'll be your last. Just remember that. You know, it's funny. But I don't recall telling you to saddle up, Jake. All right. Now listen, boys. We got the kid. And Carson's got to get him back. So all we got to do is stay here, dig in, and knock them off one by one as they try. Take your position. We get them now. Not now. That's what they want us to do. We'll pick the time and the place. What about Randy? He's all they got. Can't afford to hurt him. We'll wait. Keep them sweating and wondering. They'll get nervous and beat themselves. Start seeing things in the dark.
sight of them. Nothing. They'll be here. The men are tired. Well, if they want to stay alive, they better stay awake. You'd like a drink too, eh, Nino?
can you hear me? Yes, sir. Well, what are you going to do? I'll walk him down until he's in range. There'll only be time for one shot apiece. And he can't shoot without you on himself. You stay here. Better split up. Yes, uh, I go down there, you go up. Yeah, I figured you'd say that. this thing. Looks like an Indian trap, I reckon. I know it is an Indian trap! Cut me down, come on! Well, now, don't look like no Utes near. Or Shoshone, neither. Look, I don't care if it was a Chinese that set this up. Just cut me down, come on! Well, now maybe you and me can do some trading. See that, that book you always read? 
Oh, come on, kid. Couldn't do that to me. I gave a good green of her knife for that book. Oh. Well, that was a mistake. For a man who gets into the kind of trouble as you do, you ought to always carry two knives. Oh, all right, all right. Now. <coughs> Thank you, mon ami. Yeah, mon ami, mon ami. Yeah, now we'll see what we can do about this problem yeah. here you've got. Mon ami, mon ami. No, sir. There ain't nothing like a warm fire on a cold night to cheer a body up. No, sir. There ain't nothing like it. to us all. Yes, sir. But I'm glad we were able to keep our rendezvous. Something I want to show you. You should have come with us, Mr. Carson. Good water holes, not a snowflake, didn't even see a hostile Indian. Neither did we, Captain. to another rendezvous, this time with history. Captain Freeman, like 